Welcome back to our Med Smarter Lecture Series, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Before we get started, if you'll take just a quick minute and click that like button, and also subscribe and turn the bell on so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. Let's talk about Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which is another gram negative. Um, let's break down that aeruginosa Latin. Uh, that Originosa, we can think of that as aerobic. All right, so this means that it has to be in the presence of oxygen somehow. Okay, this is motile, so it can move. It is a catalase positive gram negative rod. So you see in this picture here, uh, it's not a very clear picture, but we are seeing that red color stain uh, indicating that it is gram negative. Uh, it does not ferment lactose, and it is oxidase positive. Uh, so we often see Pseudomonas in water, uh, a lot of times in soil also. It's fairly easy to tell if someone has an infection with Pseudomonas because of its odor. The odor is grape-like. This is probably a buzzword that you can use for Pseudomonas. If they talk about a patient having um, an infection on a leg and the wound is, you know, they'll describe the wound and they'll talk about how it has an odor that smells like grapes. That's a great buzzword for Pseudomonas infections. So what all type of symptoms do we have with Pseudomonas? Well, Pseudomonas actually in and of itself can be a mnemonic to help you remember what different symptoms that it causes. So uh, Pseudomonas, spelled out, can be pneumonia, sepsis, ecthyma gangrenosum, UTIs, diabetes, osteomyelitis, mucoid polysaccharide capsule, otitis externa or swimmer's ear, nosocomial infections, addicts, and skin infections. So remember all of those particular things associated with pseudomonas that can be uh, present here. So let's break down a couple of these specifically. The mucopolysaccharide capsule. This is what helps cause chronic pneumonia in patients that have cystic fibrosis because it actually forms a biofilm. Uh, that biofilm is very difficult to get rid of, and that's where we can have chronic pneumonia. Uh, even though we can give antibiotics and kill some of that bacteria, that biofilm is much more difficult to get rid of. Pseudomonas also produces PEEP, which is a phospholipase C that dis degrades the cell membranes. Uh, so that's the P in PEEP. The E in PEEP is an endotoxin. Uh, that endotoxin can give us a fever and a shock. Uh, the second E is an exotoxin A. Uh, that exotoxin A specifically will come in and activate the EF2 cascade. And then the final P is pigments. So pyoveridine and pyocyanin are going to be present in Pseudomonas. That's what gives it a characteristic blue-green pigment. So if you see patients that uh, they describe a wound on the leg or on the arm or somewhere on the body on the skin um, that has a blue-green pigment and it smells like grapes, then this is diagnostic of Pseudomonas for us. It can also cause corneal ulcers and keratitis, uh, specifically for those patients that wear contact lenses. Um, not just necessarily contact lenses, but that they have contact lenses that they consistently wear without taking them out. That's why it's important to uh, educate your patients that wearing contact lenses 24-7, 365, and never taking them out to give your eye the chance to breathe and, and get rid of some of these potential infections uh, is very important. We don't want to keep uh, contact lenses in all the time because of things like Pseudomonas uh, keratitis there. Minor eye trauma can also cause some of that too if it gets infected with that particular bacteria. So we also mentioned a minute ago the ecthyma gangrenosum. What is that? That is a necrotic cutaneous lesion that's caused by Pseudomonas. Uh, you can see here in this picture, uh, it's a little small, but there's some uh, lesions here on this individual patient uh, all over the legs here. So that is a rapidly progressive necrotic lesion there caused by Pseudomonas, and it's labeled as ecthyma gangrenosum. Uh, oftentimes we see these in patients that are immunocompromised. So how do we treat Pseudomonas? We're going to treat Pseudomonas with campfire drugs. Okay, Campfire is another mnemonic that we can use here. Uh, it's going to spell out carbapenems for the C. The A is aminoglycosides. The M is monobactams. The P is polymyxin, so polymyxin B or colistin. This is also known as polymyxin E. 
The F in campfire is fluoroquinolones. These are going to be like ciprofloxacin or levofloxacin. The I and the R uh, are kind of mixed in, and this is just a little bit of a way to get this mnemonic to work, but third and fourth generation cephalosporins. So ceftazidime and cefepime are two of your uh, main ones that work very well for pseudomonas. And then finally, the E in campfire is your extended spectrum penicillins like piperacillin and ticaracillin. If you found this material helpful for your studying, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, share this video so that more people can benefit from it like you have.